we got snow on the fast track so far the christmas and the reindeers feel right at home it's day six four four of doing videos so i've been doing a video every single day so if you're new to the channel this is why first day of lockdown started as a joke and now here we are anyway it's obviously boxing day i'm going to take chess of the dog for a walk and you can enjoy a video an in-depth look the class and why it's a bit of a game changer in the ag industry at the moment so here it is right so this is Gethin from class now hopefully you won't need a translator at least the welsh guys won't that are watching anyway he's going to talk through some of the unique features of this tractor because i will not remember them all so let's start with the weight it's 19 ton is it uh, weight of this tractor is roughly about 1910 with the weight block and the tear attack unit on the back there now. But once we start putting implements in the ground, we can go up to sort of 2210, uh, 2310 weight transfer uh, in total there. And then t t tell us about the tracks because so this track is 735. This track here is like roughly, I think it's about 735 mil in uh, width there now. Um, We've got a two and a two point five nine meters of contact area on the underside as well. So what I could remember is the, the tracks and the wheels on this have a footprint equal to a tractor on basically dual wheels all the way around. Yet it's narrow for the road. The other thing is, if you kind of wanted to use narrow tracks for spud work, you could have narrow tracks on this and then take your wide tracks off your combine in the summer, or you could have wide tracks on your tractor that you can put in your combine if you have a wet summer. Yeah, so we can do that and make this thing now work immediately. And then the fuel tank, there was that is uh, in total four, uh, sorry, eight hundred and sixty-seven litres of usable fuel on board, and then add blue wise we've got yeah seven, seventy-five litres of usable add blue on board as well. So we are totally good twelve hour day. So if it was a wheel version, you have smaller fuel tanks because the wheels obviously get in the way. So this will work for four hours longer in a day than than the wheel version. Yeah, yeah that right it. yeah that's it. You got it then we've obviously got these steps that come up the front and then you've got the mirror in a strange place but that's because this you can't put it there because you'd bang your head on it so instead they put an aerial there but that can be moved apparently <laughs> <laughs> we've got to tell them about the bad bits as well as the good bits good. the back lift is what category four cap four on the back here now and uh, we've got 11 half ten lift capacity on the rear here now, which is slightly uh, lower than on the wheel version because the architecture of the link gauge is slightly longer. Oh, I see, yeah, the link arm stuck. Moving forward the link gauge because the tracks are still up. Yeah, and then the tracks as well, you can adjust how much they bite when you turn, so it kind of will, will break one track to make it turn shorter. Yeah. So on the track system, we can raise and lower the height of the tractor. Uh, we've got a high, a medium version, and then we've got a, a manual version where you can dial it in to have whatever height you want. And then with a the track braking assistance, assistance then is basically, it will help you steer the tractor around the headlands or around your yard, depends what you're doing now. But if you're working on like soft drilling, you won't want it too aggressive, otherwise you could probably make a bit of a ridge when you turn. Yeah. So you, that's why you can change all them settings. Uh, obviously standard PEO like a normal tractor. So it's sort of 450 horsepower at the PTO? Uh, we are looking at, at the engine wise, we are looking at 450 horsepower. Obviously, residual losses going through the back end and the transmission, you lose a little bit. So you'd be still looking at roughly around the top end of 400 there then. So you wouldn't, wouldn't lose a heck of a lot, to be honest. So you, if you had like a massive wood chipper, that's only really you'd yeah. use that much power for, isn't it? Yeah, no problem. You wouldn't want it on the baler. Um, Cab wise, pretty similar to the other one, but there's some mods coming, isn't there? So it's getting uh, like a new armrest and wider. It is slightly top secret, but there oh, right, may be some. <laughs> some uh, yeah, don't buy these for a good few months. <laughs> <laughs> some slightly uh, adjustments to the cab in the distant future, but that's still. Massive deals to be done on yeah. at the moment, old stock. Auto lube up there, presumably, is just for the tracks. Yes, just for the track system. But down the front axle, there's hardly no grease nipples in at all because most of it is encased and seen for life on the front axle. But like I said, uh, now. Uh, it is all basically to do with the track system and lubricating all the points in there. Yeah, and then so let's go a bit round. There's something else I saw. Oh, yeah. So if you look underneath, you can see the trumpet housing. If it was a wheeled version, that bolts on there. So to, to build, there's not a lot of difference in price because it kind of is born as a wheeled one and then yeah. on the way down the production line, it has different things fastened to so it. So what you get here now is basically a wheeled version of an Axiom 960. The engine, the gearbox, the back end is exactly the same. The only biggest difference is we have saxophone tubes here. I'll, instead I'll go around and show you. Instead of half I flip the camera. Yeah. So you've got, what do you say? You call it We've saxophone. Got saxophone tubes here. So basically, instead of having half axles like you'd have in a conventional tractor, yeah. we have saxophone tubes, which bring the uh, axle point down. And then we have a drive shaft, 
coming out of the uh, rear axle at full speed and all the reduction of the uh, unit then is done inside the tail track unit. Yeah, so that shaft actually spins quite fast, doesn't it? Yes, that's it. Like a conventional track bit. Yeah. Power flow is all transmitted to the diff, comes out into the reduction unit in the half axle and then into the wheels. Here now, power flow comes out the shaft full speed and all the reduction is done inside the tail track unit. Yeah, and then no steps on this side, but you can climb up the tracks if you want to do the mirrors and the windows. Yes. Massive, massive exhaust, similar to the one that you used to put on the front of the Zerion, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, it's big chrome exhaust. Size. Obviously, this one comes with the, uh, the chrome uh, uh, guard on it, but with our engine, it is an FPT 8.7 uh, litre engine which is, has a CPS, uh, Class Power Systems engine management system on it. And uh, basically we make the map for the engine and then we only take the, the engine from the sump line up and yeah. then we, we design our own sump system which the engine sits inside. So this this is this like lattice work which is like the top of a pie. So anyone in Wigan watching will know what that is. <laughs> uh, basically then we can get more power and torque out of that same engine using the same uh, infrastructures as what other manufacturers would do with FPT engines. Up. And then it's a Vario gearbox with three speeds, yeah? Uh, we've got three interim speeds. So you've got 0 to 20k, 0 to 30k and 0 to 45k. So this being a tire track version would be only 45k. Uh, a wheel version would obviously then go up to like 56k then for the road speeds then. Yeah. And with the gearbox then, fully CVT and then it's got four mechanical ranges on the inside then which are fully adjustable and fully automatic. So the driver just sits in there, sets his speed, sets his droop and off you go. Tell me about the, the maps you were saying before. So it's basically, the, the engine's got two maps. So depending on what work you're doing, depends on what it t characteristics it has. So the engine now and the transmission work together, being a CVT system. And what we can use this uh, tractor in, in eco mode. So if we had a, let's say, a large plow subsoil on the back there now, we tend to use that um, map then in eco mode. And we'd utilize something between, let's say, 23% droop down to 27% droop. Then all the torque the engine produces will torque to the transmission and then it'll give you all that pulley power uh, in torque then at the track system. And then in power wise, uh, power mode, if we had a large chaser bin, trailer, sluggy tank, the system on the back, we can utilize that then to drive to a certain point on the uh, engine and with 15% uh, droop on the transmission settings, it'll give you all the power going from the transmission to pull that implement or tank or trailer around the place on the fields when you're working there. Yeah, okay, let's have a look in the cab then. Go up the steps yeah. without banging your head on the mirror. <laughs> Show us how it's done. Ah, here we go. <laughs> right, up the steps and watch your head, watch your head on the aerial. Oh, he's missed. <laughs> right, this is good. It's like a rubber that you, I don't know, it's like a, what did you call it like a load liner you'd have around your boot? Right, let's see. Passenger seat, there we go. Now, Apparently you can get a tailored mat where you can have your own name on the mat, which is pretty clever. And then that airline, something special, isn't it? That comes with the kit, is it? So what we've got here now, we've got the metallic seed green package on the color. So we can offer metallic seed Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So look at this. It's metallic class green. Ignore these bits. This is for the track to run. That's an Ollie blog special. That's 400 pound option. Yeah. And then seed green, uh, metallic, as we can see there. Uh, we've got uh, gunmetal grey, metallic again, and a nice glossy black colour with red wheels as well. So inside the cab here now we have our CBIS armrest. So we've got our 12-inch screen here. We've got our S10 guidance screen, which is mounted on the rail here. And part of the package as well, uh, we can add on a DAB radio headset. Instead of having a standard radio there, we have a uh, configurable... Uh, you get a sunglasses dab, holder instead. ...dab system there then, which you can play your, let's say, Apple iTunes and stuff like that on it. That's Apple iTunes for anyone that doesn't understand Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, going on here, we've got our CB screen. So every time we start the tractor up, we have this nice welcome page. If I hit the tick here now, we can have our fuel page and we can navigate the screen here to our road page. So we got, let's say, engine RPM, speed, fuel, add blue usage, engine temperature, and forward speed here. If I hit the top there, takes us onto a, let's say, fuel page where we can adjust certain settings like engine memos, uh, set our modes as in eco or power, 
And so that's just like now, your two engine maps, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So similar here, we've got Eco for let's say how you call it, air soil engaging implements. Or if you're just pooling on the road, you can save a bit of fuel by using a lot less RPM. And then the power one, if you're heavy implements, you could literally use a bit more power and obviously you should burn a bit more fuel. Uh, and obviously we've got acceleration settings there. Uh, as I touched that one then. So the main thing, how to adjust anything on the class track that we see this, is basically highlight the triangle, turn it around, leave it where you want it, press the tick, job done. So every setting is done in that similar way. Just like the combine, really. Mm. Yeah, it's very similar. It's quite, let's say, cost compliant with everything that we try and do in class there now. So everything you see in a combine or a forager is not far away how you do it in a the, in the track then. Like. Also as well, it's got a heated rear screen, which is pretty clever. Yeah, so this one here now is heated rear screen as you'd have in a standard car. Uh, option is basically a heated uh, rear screen or a tinted uh, blacked out rear screen to keep the sun off your back as well. So doing those long days doing the cultivation work or harvest. Then the GPS. Um, You're getting a new screen coming, aren't you, did you say? Uh, a bit more. Yes. Going forward, this is the next 10. Um, so this is being phased out shortly now. So our new screen will be still a second screen strategy, it will be quite similar to this, which is called a Seamus 1200, which will have the same feel, same usability as this, and would be similar to, let's say, an Android phone or an iPhone, where you could swipe jobs in and out of these small boxes into the main section there then. And it's fully, uh, let's say, cloud compatible with information from our telematics system. Yeah, and then also in here, got like a little flashing green light so that's our ucm module so with the area which you can see on the outside here which is for our so you just watch the area got telematics there and another one there so that brings all the data in and with our new cms 1200 and a few other gadgets and gizmos we can literally basically transfer stuff from your home computer into the let's say the cloud that'll pick it up store it in there and then transfer it all into our CMS 1200 system and that'll talk to John Deere and New Holland with software with the sticker system you can see on our when we say the sticker system we made this that's what it was launching yet so with the data connect system we transfer data let's say farm data field data um, yield data and stuff like that where we would transfer between other manufacturers with our telematic system uh, that's what the data connect system is all about then. so we at the moment we can go jd we can go cnh products as well so and class products and all talk to each other and share the data that they accumulate for their working data can you have this with a manual gearbox this no but if you wanted a manual gearbox you'd have to go all the way down a few ranges to our avion 600 range where you can have a hexa shift which is a 24 by 24 and a um Avion 500 as well, which is a so all, all the big class models are very is it? Going forward, uh, there is still a, still a few in the 800 series which are hexa shift, but we're trying to let's say push towards the CVT versions of all our tractors for the, 200 horsepower. And this is a 960, so Just... 960 is 445 horsepower with 1860 newton meters of torque, then at sort of a max torque is at 1400 rpm. So it's a quad track killer. That's what we try and do. <laughs> well, what, are the, what are them green ones with the yellow tracks called? Ed? Oh, the eight directs. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We uh, do have many competitions against them, and uh, yeah, we uh, have fun doing that as well. So in the summer, he's going to bring one of these down. We'll get an eight RX and put a chain between it and see which pulls the best. Of course, it's going to be old. <laughs> right, I think we've probably done it all. Don't forget the most important thing: it comes with air horns. <laughs> Blown the speaker out my phone. <laughs> Thanks to everyone that's been watching over the festive period. Merry Christmas still to everyone. We've traced a little guy with the 8RX, so hopefully we'll have that in a video very soon. So thanks again for watching. There's the birthday bumper, and I'll see you tomorrow.